The Wright brothers, of course, helped to put Dayton on the map, an honor they justly deserve. But as 2 News Today anchor John Seibel explains, two other men and one club helped change the world with their love for Dayton. STEM. It's the new catchphrase schools throughout the country are trying to cling to, focusing on science, technology, engineering, and math. STEM certainly has a ring to it, but new? We've been doing STEM education in Dayton since before it was cool to do STEM education. For over 100 years to be exact, now there's no formal declaration or moment in time to declare when STEM officially began, but the Dayton Engineers Club can make a pretty compelling argument. It and Charles F. Kettering's lectures played a major role. He used to give lectures on Saturday mornings. Now this was long before anybody thought of STEM, but he had high school kids coming in here on Saturday mornings and he would have his stuff all rigged up on the stage. Kettering and Colonel Edward Deeds founded the Engineers Club, paid for the building, and laid the foundation for innovation. Between the two, hundreds of patents, most notably with the ignition system for automobiles, effectively changing the world of transportation forever. A similar impact to another duo, Matthew Bolton and James Watt, over 100 years prior. And those two yanked England ahead of the rest of Europe by a generation, and these two did something very similar for the United States. Over the past century, the Engineers Club has been the birthplace of innovation. But for what gave birth to the club, all you need to do is look across the street at the ferocity of Mother Nature. This is the point where the levee broke. So across the street, the levee breaks, the flood comes downtown, 1913, and, you know, the city's decimated. It had been happening pretty regularly. Every four or five years, there'd be a flood. But then in 1913, the flood that came was absolutely disastrous. And so they just decided they'd fix it. Deeds and Kettering put a call out for the best minds to find a flood fix once and for all. And the talent responded, succeeding in turning one of the most flood-prone areas on the planet into one of the least. The Miami Valley Conservancy was born from those meetings. So, too, was the Dayton Engineers Club. They were meeting in an empty house a couple of blocks east of here. That group grew to about 100 people. Well, that was more than the house would handle. Another challenge presented, another fix, to construct a building just for the club and to do it right at the spot where the flood started. On February 2nd, 1918, the Dayton Engineers Club held its first meeting in the new building. 100 years later, its place in history is cemented on the National Register of Historic Places. It speaks volumes to who we are, what we are, and, and how we go about our business. The history is impressive, but what about now? And what about the next 100 years? I'll start with just the Air Force Research Lab in Wright-Patterson. That's in itself a collection that's unmatched, but then you go outside there into all of the people that are still working out at the mound the people that are working at Reynolds and Reynolds and LexisNexis. Innovation hasn't stopped. It's just that we need to start reminding people now. John Seibel, 2 News, working for you.